We will begin the VFD installation by removing the forward reverse control switch. We will be reinstalling this later using control voltage from the VFD, but for now, it's just getting in the way. Of course, we confirm that the plug is not connected. We'll start by disconnecting the incoming power cable. Next we can disconnect the motor leads, keeping track of which pairs are tied together. We can always check this later and we will double check it, but I believe this motor is currently wired for 220 volts and that's what we'll be using in our install as well. I would like to mount this VFD up near the head so it's out of the way. This will of course necessitate making a custom mounting box. Let's take some measurements. These hex screws countersunk fit perfectly and of course the VFD lines up and the, the bolt holes align. <coughs> VFD fits in here perfectly, the face is flush, and the bolt holes align. I'll we'll have to do a little bit of sanding and trimming, but this is a good start. We'll have to deal with this roughness and over extrusion, and I'm not happy with how thin this edge got, but I think it'll work just fine for our purposes. We do have a little bit of delamination to fix as well, but a bit of ASA slurry should take, that, take care of that in a hurry. We can add just a little bit of acetone. We want this to form a slurry. It should dissolve fairly quickly. For 
now I'll lightly clamp it so that I can access the crack. After just a few minutes, our ASA has dissolved into a nice slurry. Once I've got a sufficient amount in, I'll clamp it up in the vise. We'll get this out of our way while we work on putting heat set inserts into the back of the VFD. I'll use a soldering iron to insert these directly into the housing. We will have to open up this hole just a little bit. A 5mm drill bit should be just the right size for these M3 inserts. We don't want these inserts to be able to fall in place, but they should just be able to sit in place when the hole is sized correctly. If you're having trouble getting these inserts to go in, I suggest warming up your soldering iron first. We want them just below the surface. Let's rewire this plug. This machine, originally being a three-phase machine, uses a three-phase plug. Since I'll be hooking this up to my generator for the time being, I'll be using an L14 13 amp, 30 amp, excuse me, plug. Everything loose, you should just be able to plug push this forward. And look at that, we even get some free chips. Start by removing any of the three leads. We can then take our new L14 30 amp plug and disassemble it in the same way. We'll install the housing on the cord first. Give ourselves some room to work. As I'm looking at this, I think, let's put some ferrules on it. Ferrules just like make life easy. Sometimes you'll find you can't fit these in the housing, so it's good to just double check first. And we should be able to get these in. I'll have to loosen them up and check. Yep, that should fit. Simply take your ferrule, insert it over the wire end, and crimp square. Just like that. Now you've got a nice, secure, tight connection that won't fray. You can very simply insert it where you need it to. And just like that, you get four nice crimped connections. We'll start by installing the project box directly to the mill in place of the original directional control switch. Then we'll slide our cord through. For now I'm going to cap off the neutral line as it won't be used in this single phase 220 volt installation 
but at a later date, if we have three phase available, we might use it. I've inserted the cord far enough into the housing that I'll have plenty of cable available to connect to the VFD. We can now tighten down the cord. It's important to tighten this clamp equally. And you often see people over tighten these. Really they just need to be tight enough to secure the cord. Off camera we've gone ahead and removed the front cover from the VFD. This exposes the terminals for the motor connections as well as the incoming power connections. The U, V, and W terminals will be connected to the motor, the configuration of which does not matter. The ground will be connected to the incoming ground, and the R and T terminals will be connected to our red and black wires in this single phase 220 volt connection. In the future, if we ever opted to use three phase as the incoming power, we would use the R, S, and T terminals. In this case, we don't have three phase available, and this VFD is capable of running on single phase, so we'll use just the R and T ports. Off camera, I'm gonna go ahead and connect all of these connections. With everything connected, and ensure, after ensuring everything is tight, we can reinstall this front cover. If we were to install any control, any controls such as start, stop buttons, e-stops, etc., we'd be connecting them to this front panel. I've intentionally designed this box to keep the controls voltage and the high voltage separate from each other, but for now we'll leave this all disconnected as we're just going to be testing this motor.